Well, good afternoon. This is Hound Dog Steve wishing you a very pleasant afternoon. And uh, here is, again, this stunning ruling by uh, an Ontario Superior Court judge. Uh, it was a situation where um, a mother was not prepared to force her daughter to get inoculated and the father was adamant. And uh, the judge's ruling is absolutely scathing and is in favor of the daughter uh, being old enough to make a decision on her own behalf. Uh, he basically praised her for the evidence that she presented and the evidence-based nature that she stuck to uh, whilst he criticized the father basically for uh, character assassination, uh, trying to call the mother a bad mother, this kind of stuff. Um, so. Yes, uh, this is incredible because when you go to court, anytime you have an issue uh, and you want to prove your point, it's pretty well 100% you've got to have some kind of precedent. No matter how far back it is, uh, if you do not have that precedent, judges are very unwilling to rule um, in favor or against. They will step back and they'll, they'll say, well, we need some precedent here, or they'll waffle. So if you can get a precedent set, and you know, there was a new market judge uh, also in Ontario, uh, he'd taken the complete opposite point of view, uh, that this kind of behavior was a, a threat to the community and the child. Uh, so yes, to have this new precedent set, is incredible. Now, whether this will be challenged in court, I have absolutely no idea, but um, I certainly hope not. Or well, maybe we should. The more this is in the front of people's faces, the more people are going to realize how incorrect it was to try and force people in an experimental procedure. You know, it would be one thing if it was tried and tested. You know, if it was like uh, forcing everyone to get their polio or um, smallpox or, um, well, we do with certain vaccinations at school. Um, and that's not a problem. However, well, I, well, I should retract that. Uh, there are some people who think it is a problem. Um, but, you know, we do do this on a regular basis and it is not considered, it is not considered experimental because they are tried and tested. And in this case, the judge is saying implicitly, this is an experiment. And the Nuremberg Code quite explicitly says, we do not have to participate and we cannot be coerced into participating in a medical experiment. Anyway, here is the judge's ruling and uh, come back and do a quick wrap up. Okie dokie, here we go. So here is this stunning article from CBC. They must have absolutely choked on this. Ontario judge rules mother doesn't have to inoculate her children against CV. Kids have other vaccinations and already have CV and recovered, judge says in decision. An Ontario judge says he's not prepared to accept as fact that inoculating children against CV is what's best for them simply because it's encouraged by the government. Noting a number of factors, including the children's own preferences, must be taken into account. In a decision issued last week, Superior Court Judge Alex Pararatz rejected a father's motion to have his two younger children, aged 12 and 10, inoculated despite objections from their mother and the kids themselves, and cautioned against dismissing certain viewpoints without evidence. The ruling represents a departure from earlier Canadian cases involving disputes over CV inoculations where courts have taken what's called judicial notice, essentially accepting statements as fact that immunisation is beneficial for children, says Alicia Bark, an associate lawyer at Shulman and Partners LLP. We now have cases where judges have taken that judicial notice that the inoculation is in the best interest and now one where it was decided that it wasn't the case. And so it's a reminder that each family's circumstances and the circumstances of the children are going to be taken into consideration on a case-by-case -case basis, she said Tuesday. It is noticeable that Justice Pararatz, in his decision, did go through the other cases where this judicial notice had been taken and distinguished it and how this case was different than other cases. 
in most of the previous cases the children were younger so their views on CV shots were either unascertainable or less relevant because of the child's lack of maturity the judge wrote in his ruling mm -hmm. and in the cases where the children's preferences were overridden the court found the parents seeking inoculation had presented more reasonable information to the children and made more compelling arguments in court Pararat said as well, the court in many of those cases found the materials presented by the parent opposed to the inoculation were grossly deficient, unreliable and at times dubious. This lack of an equally credible counterpoint to government recommendations may well have been determinative in those earlier cases, he said. Here, the parents, both in their mid-30s, separated more than seven years ago. The oldest, a 14-year-old boy, lives primarily with his father and chose to be inoculated against CV last fall, a decision both parents supported the ruling says. The two younger children, a 12-year-old girl and a 10-year-old boy, live primarily with their mother. Both were interviewed twice by a social worker and explained why they didn't want to be inoculated, with the youngest also expressing fears that his father would force him to get the shots, the, do the document says. The mother stressed she is not against inoculations overall, adding all three have received their regular immunizations, the ruling says. She also stated she would be open to having the younger two, who have already had the virus and recovered, get CV shots at a later date if safety concerns can be better addressed, it says. Among the materials she submitted were a fact sheet issued by Pfizer, the drug maker behind one of the main CV inoculations, and scientific papers, Pararat said. The father, meanwhile, submitted fact sheets issued by the government and the Canadian Pediatric Society, as well as numerous downloads from the mother's social media accounts on allegations she was promoting conspiracy theories, the ruling said. The mother's evidence focused entirely on the medical and scientific issues. In contrast, the father focused extensively on labelling and discrediting the mother as a person in a preemptive attempt to argue that her views aren't worthy of consideration. Now, this is exactly what has happened through this whole process to all of us who have had our points of view absolutely shut down based on a character assassination and not on fact. What's more, he said, there is no evidence the mother had sought to impose her views on the children. Parrots warned against allowing personal attacks rather than debate based on evidence into the judicial system. He also cautioned against applying judicial notices in cases where expert opinion is unclear or in dispute, noting the government has historically been wrong on many issues, including the residential school system. Father lawyers strongly disagree with ruling. The judge further noted that health directors have constantly changed during the outbreak as new information emerged. This is not the kind of case where the court can say that either side is necessarily correct, nor that the same determination should apply for every child no matter the circumstances, he wrote. Anyone reading even some of the articles presented by the mother would likely conclude that these are complicated and evolving issues, and there can be no simplistic presumption that one side is right and the other side is compromised of a bunch of crackpots. That's why the court should require evidence rather than conclusory statements. The father, meanwhile, provided no evidence that the mother's views had been debunked, the judge wrote. Jess Herman, who represents the father, declined to say whether his client would seek to challenge the ruling. At this time, all I can comment is that we strongly disagree with the decision that was made, he said in an email. Now, since this has been made, and the date on this is March the 2nd, uh, 2022, uh, Thunder Bay. Sault Ste. Marie. OK, so here is a case from August the 18th, 2022, and Christopher Corkery, uh, Superior Court Justice, has made the same decision. So one judge has made a decision, and almost immediately after, another judge made the same decision, implying exactly the same thing. So in his ruling, siding with the mother and daughter, Justice Christopher Corkery wrote that the science relating to CV is developing and adding the facts are changing. OK, so this this is just the tip of the iceberg and it is so important now to have two. In fact, since I made the narrative on this video, I discovered this. I thought this was the one I was talking about. But we now have two precedents being set in Ontario. That is huge.
So I won't belabor the point here, but uh, it is just important that these precedents are being set. I can assure you that there are a lot of um, middle-sized businessmen who have also been crippled by this, and they will be bringing lawsuits. They'll be using these precedences as a, uh, a stepping stone to get their settlements because they have been unfairly uh, crippled by rulings and mandates that were absolutely unnecessary. It's absolutely known. None of this was necessary. And the effects that it's had on people have been staggering. And the way it was dealt with, losing your job with no benefits? What? You, you, you can't get unemployment benefits? What happens when it's your pension? Oh, you're not going to get your pension unless. Careful what you wish for, my friends. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe below. And in the meantime, this is Handlock Steve wishing you a very pleasant afternoon. And we'll talk very, very shortly. You take care now. See ya. Bye.